when when did any kind of issues start or pop up like how i was you... 11 i was 11 years old i was in the seventh grade when i was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes so i was just a kid so i don't really know any different it's more it's been more than half my life my name is melissa Callshaw. i'm 24 i am a type 1 diabetic i have gastroparesis I also have diabetic retinopathy in both of my eyes, and I am an end-stage renal failure. <laughs> Would you say the nice stuff first? Say the nice stuff first? Okay, yeah, nice stuff. I really like Disney. I'm a huge Disney nerd. Um, I love my cats. I'm also an old cat lady. I like being outside. Um, I like reading. Right now I have strictly audiobooks because of my eyes, but I love reading. And... Basically just trying to be happy when I'm not in the hospital. Um, so for treatment, there's a couple different things. Um, with the fluid leaking into your eyes, usually it, um, it'll just drain out by itself in a couple weeks, but mine hasn't drained away. So you get injections into your eyes of a drug called Avastin and they put a needle in your eye and inject it in there and it's to help uh, the veins shrink. But if the fluid doesn't go away on its own, like it has not for me, you have surgery where they have uh, five different entry points into your eye and they drain all the fluid out for you. I have had that surgery on my right eye last March and then on May 3rd, I'm having it done on my left eye. Typical week is uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, going to dialysis and usually spending Tuesday and Thursday recovering from going to dialysis. It makes me incredibly sick, so I pretty much sleep the next day. And it's just up the street, and there's a center where you go with all the other people, and you all get dialysis at the same time. Not everyone has a reaction to it, but I am unfortunately one of those people, so weekends are always great. I don't have to sit through it. And I can actually like, go outside and see people and not, I usually don't feel too miserable on the weekends. Is that um, Haley? Yeah. That is? My dog, yeah. <laughs> like my best friend, she's everywhere I go. It's really weird that she didn't follow us here, but yeah, she barks at everything. But she sounds angry, but she's so happy. Like, her tail wags the whole time. She just wants to know who's on the other side of the fence. She's not like, go away. She's like, come over here and see me and love me. She's a huge dog, and she has such a pitiful bark. It's, like, so high-pitched. You'd expect it from a way smaller dog. She just is a sweetheart. She can't help it. She just sounds pathetic. <laughs> For now, I have a catheter in my chest that goes right here, and... um it's for temporary use. Um, I got my fistula surgery, so I have a nice big scar right here. Um, got my fistula surgery last week, and a fistula is like a, a tube that they connect to your vein, and it's a permanent solution. It's a permanent access to receive dialysis versus a catheter, which is just temporary. And you need the catheter because um, your fistula has to heal and it has to mature. So like you can see the tubing in my uh, chest here, you can see it's technically matured, so it kind of grows and it gets bigger. That's what's gonna happen um, up my arm, is I'll have a better access port for permanent um, dialysis if I ever need it after my transplant. And so why do you, why do, you do the dialysis? Uh, I am currently an end-stage renal failure, which means my kidneys are not doing their job at all and if I don't get a transplant or do dialysis it will kill me fucking horse <laughs> it's like quiet there's a horse up in the distance <laughs> um so the last one would be my stomach uh, I have a condition called gastroparesis it's where um the muscles in your stomach die off and so they don't uh, contract. So you, you eat food, it goes on your esophagus, it goes to your stomach. Your uh, stomach contracts to move your food into the small intestine and so you can digest. Um, so an average healthy person, you digest 
50% of your food within an hour of eating, it takes me up to 12 to 13 hours to digest food. And your body obviously doesn't like that because it's very uncomfortable. It just sits in your stomach like a brick. So you often throw up undigested food because it's the only way for your body to get rid of it. Or you have to wait for your stomach to try and get its life together and contract, which doesn't happen because the muscles have died. And it's super common with diabetics. And uh, I was diagnosed about two years ago. It feels like really bad heartburn and then you're just throwing up all the time and you don't know why and it, it takes them a long time to diagnose it. It's a really um, annoying process. It takes a long time. It takes people like years sometimes and uh, you'll lose weight because your stomach isn't processing it. You're not getting the nutrients you need and it's pretty shitty. I would say it's probably the most annoying of all the things that I have to deal with. It's it's worse than dialysis to me. There's just some places my body's like, you're not eating there, bitch. Like, you are not gonna be able to handle it. Um, with gastroparesis, there's um, there's a couple surgical, like, uh, like different surgical pr procedures they've tested, but uh, the most effective thing that I've ever used for it is pot. It's like the best treatment for it. Did you wanna smoke? Yeah. It's like, uh, it's one of the best things to do. I always use it before I eat because um, your stomach muscles die off and you don't feel hunger. So, I mean, like if I, I think I've gone like a couple days or like weeks without smoking and I won't eat, like I won't feel hungry. such a nice area to be smoking too it's so good um i have diabetic retinopathy and macular degeneration in both of my eyes so i have um extra um veins in my eyes that have kind of grown rogue and they just leak blood and fluid into my eyes so i cannot see out of them i haven't driven in like four months um it affects a lot of things when you can't see. <laughs> it's definitely I can't drink wine or beer because of my kidneys, but it's still fun to go out. I like to go to movies when my eyes are doing well. That's fun. Um, I like to just be outside when I'm not like cooped up because usually during the week I'm just in the house because it's too much to leave. Like my body is like physically weak and it takes a lot out of you mentally so it's nice to just literally just be outside you seem to have a pretty good attitude for, i mean like for all the <laughs> everything you're talking about it's i mean like you definitely get down on it and stuff but i have like i have the best support system like i have really good friends my family is great about it and there's always people willing to help and it's I've been like, I've taken the sad route about it before. Like when I was younger, I took it really hard when I started having kidney problems and I was first diagnosed with everything. But I realized it doesn't, it doesn't do much to be upset about it. It just makes you depressed and depressed people don't recover as well. And you kind of alienate yourself. And it's the last thing you need when you're going through things like this. Like you need other people, otherwise it's gonna be way worse. You don't have to be happy about it, but you have to find almost the humor in it. Like, none of my sisters have anything wrong with them. I take everything for the team in this family. And seriously, like, they're in, like, great health, and I have, like, everything against me. So anytime there's, like, an odds or a percentage thing, we tend to take it extremely seriously because I'm always that small percentage. <laughs> All right. Um, is there anything you want to say? Um, well, not really. Um, thanks for interviewing me. It's been fun. Yeah. I'm really excited for noodles. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks. Oh, oh my God. My chair wasn't level and I scooted back and it like wobbled and I was like, oh my God, my life, it's flashed before my <laughs> eyes. <laughs>